Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the Grow Tent, everybody. You have found the best growing channel on YouTube, man. The place where we simplify the approach for you so everyone can learn how to grow. We make it so simple, even I can understand. So I'm going to listen and learn right now. Woo! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Grow Tent. We got an awesome, awesome episode for you today. Sorry, this is extremely cold. I'm trying this new drink. It's called Liquid Death. It's just more seltzer water. And it's called Mango Chainsaw. And I freaking love it. It's probably my new favorite, even over Cherry Bubbly. We got a great episode for you today. We are going to be talking about clones and the danger about bringing them into your garden unless they're coming, even if they're coming from someplace you know that, like, oh, yeah, these guys are really good with their plants, they have really good outcomes. We're still going to talk about how dangerous it is to do it. And if you're going to do it, ways, some very simple steps that you can take to ensure you're not bringing anything bad into your garden. Because I've seen more people's entire gardens get ruined by bringing in clones than anything else people do. And today we're going to talk about the steps you can do to ensure that doesn't happen to you if you do want to bring clones into your garden. So uh, let's talk about that, guys. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, uh, get some mango chainsaw liquid death and uh let's watch a mars hydro commercial real quick if you want to save some extra money on your mars hydro stuff they have a 18 percent off sale going on right now through the 21st 420 is coming up make sure you tune into the all-day live stream and uh if you use our code WTTGT on top of the discount, you get to stack that on top of the discount. So you can get like 20% off, 21% off discounts right now on the Mars site using the link in the video description below. Uh, let's go to a commercial real quick and we'll be right back. Put this more in the frame. If you're looking for any kind of new light, new tent, anything like that, Mars Hydro is the main sponsor of the channel. Uh, no matter what size tent you have, no matter what light you need, what your budget is, they have a light or a tent or any, pretty much, they make all the equipment now. Uh, any piece of equipment that you would want or need, they have in stock. And if you use the code WTTGT, you get an extra discount whenever you check out. So if you're thinking about buying anything, any kind of new stuff, please think about checking out Mars Hydro. And uh, they'll hook you up. All right? All right. All right. That's enough of the intro. Let's get going with today's episode. All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about clones and the dangers and some of the positives and negatives you can have whenever you're dealing with them. So the, you know, the biggest thing about clones is you get to go through the seedling stage really, really quickly because they're technically never seedlings. And since they're never seedlings, you never deal with the little bitty tiny plants that are really easy to kill. Um, you're dealing with a plant that's already rooted for the most part is the way people sell them and once you've gotten through those super super early stages it makes it a, a lot easier for you uh, to you have a lot less risk of killing the plant before you even get started which happens a lot with seedlings the problem is that I would say probably nine out of ten times people get spider mites in their garden it's because they've brought in They've brought in clones that came from a sick garden, and they're very hard to spot a single spider mite whenever you're looking at a clone. So today we're going to talk about some steps that you can do to prevent your garden from being overrun with spider mites or any kind of other bugs that you might not see whenever you're bringing your clones. Whenever you're bringing your clones, what are you attached to? <laughs> whenever you're bringing clones into your garden. So the first things first, anytime you're going to be dealing with clones, I like to set up um, like a decontamination zone or a uh, quarantine zone, if you will, whenever I'm dealing with clones. So instead of bringing them, like I, as you can see, we are in our grow room right now. Well, it's growing. The section you're seeing is mainly the snake room. Uh, it's like half and half now. You can see uh, one of the tents right there as far as uh, one of the grow tents. That's one of our veg tents. So I will not bring the clones. If I was going to bring clones in, I would not bring the clones into this area 
whenever I first got them. So for uh, like a two to three week time period, I am going to put them elsewhere in the house. And you can do this really easily if you could just get like a little shorty two by two tent and you can put it anywhere in the house you want you can put a super basic cheap light in it and it will work just fine for i mean a clone you can put like a little two foot t5 light over it and it's gonna it's gonna work just fine for that little bitty clone even if you've got like five or six clones that you bought uh say you went to some kind of convention or something like that a lot of times they'll have they'll be giving clones away or they will uh, you can buy clones from certain strains that you that you really really like and you bring them home and then the next thing you know you've got bugs or pests of some sort and it's not a good thing so I will have set them up in a quarantine zone listen you can set these quarantine zones up for nothing a little two foot t5 light is like 17 bucks you can get those little shorty two by two tents like people use for drying and stuff for i think like 40 or 50 bucks or you could literally just make one out of you know some panda paper or whatever and uh, you really don't even need a tent to keep them i don't i don't keep my tents in uh clones or my, my, i don't keep my clones in tents because you don't have to uh so the other nice part about it is this one simple trick will save you a ton of headache because if the plant does have anything on it and you have its own little separate section, you can keep it contained to that section extremely easily. And if you if they do have some kind of bugs, as soon as I would bring a clone in, I don't. I don't ever bring anybody's clones in from anybody else's garden. Matter of fact, if I'm ever at somebody else's garden, I don't go in in the same set of clothes that I had on. Uh, I don't go into my grow room with the same set of clothes that I had on before I uh, go into my grow room. So, all right, stop moving around so much. You were so good whenever we were doing the practice runs of this. And now you're all over the place. She knows I'm on film, so. Um, the next thing you can do is I'm going to treat the soil, whatever soil that they the clone came in. Let's say sometimes they'll come in like little party cups, solo cups with stuff already on them. Or... Uh, they'll just come in the cube. So as soon as as soon as I get the clone, I am going to <laughs> I am going to take the, the and put it into fresh soil. If if that means it came in a uh, a solo cup full of soil, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to knock as much of that soil off. I'm going to get it out. Of, I'm not even going to bring it in the house. I'm going to put it in its own fresh cup of soil. Or if it's just in a cube, I'm going to put it in brand new soil in a solo cup. Whatever. I'm going to treat that with. Uh, I'll spray the plant down with neem oil, and then I will also put uh, diatomaceous earth in the soil just to get a jump start on if anything is growing in the soil uh, or the plant has anything on it. We're going to get a start head start on just getting it out of there before we, you know, we uh, give that stuff a chance to really grow its population size. Uh, those are. If you, literally, if you just do those couple things, like those three things, put it in a quarantine area, diatomaceous earth, and spray some neem oil on it, it's going to take care of about 99% of your problems that you will ever deal with. If you want to take it a little step extra, you can put some ladybugs in there, and they will uh, seek and destroy anything that you happen to come across that's on that plant. They will kill it. And the nice part of ladybugs is they won't hurt your plant which we've talked about this in other videos. I just spit everywhere. Uh, we've talked about this in other videos. They want to hurt when you plant, and as soon as they run out of food, they just leave. They just will fly off to look for more food elsewhere. Um, where are you going? No, 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 no. Not in my shirt. Stay out. <laughs> uh, so if you just do those simple things, you will take care of the majority of your problems. Okay, that's tight. My face is turning red. Come on. And... Uh, and uh, you will have a uh, way higher success rate. Um, I do understand why people like to bring clones in for the simple fact that we were talking about earlier. It makes things, a lot of people that, that grow these plants, they have a very hard time with dealing with the seedling stage because the plants are, are very weak. You water a day too early and you, you're overwatering these plants. You water a day too late and the plants are dead. Uh, you feed just a little bit too much whenever they're seedlings and they're very, very weak and they can't handle it. And uh, you burn up the leaves and they die. This is especially true if you're doing anything with autos. 
Uh, they are extremely fragile. Coming back up. Oh, well, hello. Are we done being camera shy? Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad to see you. Thank you for coming up and hanging out on the camera and stop running around. You are squeezing my neck a little tight, which is turning my face red. And uh, that's not the best, but at least the other side's open. You just got your tail hooked around there. Uh, the thing I do like about about seeds, though, is you're starting fresh. Whenever you're, you're buying clones, I really want to see what the mother plant looked like that they came off of. I don't want to buy cold, uh, clones blind, as they would say. I want to buy my clones uh, where I've seen the mother plant, and I, I know what kind of gardener the person came from. The last thing you want to do is, because clones are pricey a lot of times, they're way more expensive than seeds, usually. Don't you bite my neck, I'll be upset. And uh, the thing is with clones, if you buy a sick clone, which it can be tough to tell sometimes whenever you're buying them, if you buy a sick clone, now you're dealing with all that time savings that you paid for to get away from. You've lost all of it because now you're going to have to nurse the plant back to health, and it would have been better off just to start from a seed with some quality genetics in the first place. But I do understand why people like doing from clones because they hate the seedling stage. So I do, I do get that because you can spend a bunch of money on those, uh, the different uh, seeds, and you can kill a lot of them, and it gets pricey quick. So it does become easier just to uh, buy the clones, but it is a dangerous proposition that comes with its own problems. And dealing with spider mites is not a problem that you want. And I would say. Nine out of ten spider mite infestations usually come from either you were out somewhere in, you know, vegetable garden, apple orchard, something like that, and you didn't change your clothes before. I mean, you can get spider mites off the bushes in front of your house, and then before you know it, you've brought them off your clothes. Your dogs, your cats have brought them into your garden, and it makes for a not fun time. Uh, trying to get rid of a spider mite infestation that you've just ruined your whole grow uh, and you've got cobweb everywhere and stuff like that. But so just do those simple tricks and it'll save you a lot of headache in the long run. But for now, me, the snake lady here, uh, we're going to be done for the day. I hope you guys come and hang out with us on the all day 420 live stream. I believe Ricky GT is hosting it. I don't believe, but I know he is. Uh, Ricky GT is hosting it. It is this week. I hope to see you guys all there. We're giving away lights and all kinds of other stuff that you don't want to miss out on. Okay, that's way too tight. Give me some space. Nope, that's too tight. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for loosening up. All right, I'll see you guys next time. I'm out of here. Talk to you later. Bye.